Today, I want to talk about taxes, and I specifically want to focus on an area of tax discussion that life insurance agents have perpetuated for quite some time. I'm going to start today with a video clip from Doug Andrew, who is a relatively well-known figurehead in the life insurance space, especially the cash value life insurance space, as it relates to retirement income, with a really big focus on using, using indexed universal life insurance as a key, if not only, vehicle for retirement asset planning and retirement income generation. I don't really care to, to comment much on Doug himself and his whole system and his ethos regarding retirement. That's not really important for today's discussion. But instead, I want to focus on a, a comment that he made in a video published about two weeks ago about taxes due on other styles of retirement assets because it underscores a common uh, conflating of the numbers that insurance agents use, I think, to oversell and even scare people into into buying cash value life insurance that in my opinion is not all that necessary. So with all that said, let's get to the video and then we'll discuss after that. But you pull out 120,000, you pay 40,000 in taxes between federal and state taxes. 41 out of 50 states has a state income tax. You're only netting 80,000 to buy gas and groceries. And now $40,000 on $120,000 of retirement income it seems like a lot. And to be sure, we want to dive into these numbers and see just how accurate that kind of scenario actually is for a real retiree. Is that really a liability that you face? A $40,000 tax hit to a $20,000 income derived, let's say, from your 401k. In order to evaluate this, we're going to use a tax calculator. Um, there's many of them online. A lot of them are great. I'm going to use the one from smartassets.com. I'll link to it in the description below. If you want to go and play with it, feel free. So we're going to assume a single status filer. This would give us the highest tax liability that we could get out of the federal income tax system. We're also going to assume that this individual lives in California because California has a relatively high income tax burden. It's quite well known for that. So this should create the highest or one of the highest possible tax liabilities we can put together in this sort of scenario um, to see how closely that reflects the uh, numbers as Doug depicted them in his video. And doing that gets us this output right here. And as you can see from the table uh, output from the calculator, the tax liability for a single filer in California is $36,213. That's not $40,000, but it's also not that far from $40,000. So perhaps Doug is right. Perhaps a lot of the insurance agents who have used really high effective tax rates are somewhat credible in their pursuit of doing this. A 40% tax rate, by the way, or 40, a $40,000 tax liability would impute a 33 and a third percent tax effective tax rate on a $120,000 income, which is quite high given that level of income. Notice something about this table. Notice the FICA line item. This is the payroll tax. It is used to collect tax revenues to fund programs like Social Security and Medicare. And it's significant to note this in this example because FICA taxes are not taxes that would be due on retirement income. So income that you take from a 401k or your IRA is not subject to FICA income and is not subject to FICA tax, which means we have to take this $9,180 that you see reported in this table and remove it from this calculation to arrive at the realistic tax liability this individual faces if they were to pull $120,000 out of their retirement assets. When we do that, we get a $27,033 tax liability. Now, that's quite a bit less than $40,000. In fact, it's about two-thirds of $40,000. It's nearly $13,000 less in tax liability. So that starts to cast some doubt on just how accurate a scenario of $40,000 due on a $120,000 income in retirement would be. But if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, casting some doubt on Mr. Andrew's example here, get ready for some new information because it's going to get a whole lot more dubious for his example. What if instead we assume that this $120,000 of retirement income is being generated by a married couple? 
that's going to bring down the tax liability considerably. And if we use this table here, you're going to see that the tax liability now drops down to $24,472. And that assumes that this is earned income. If we again take out the $9,180 FICA taxes that would be due on earned income, our new tax liability is $15,292. This includes federal and California state income taxes. Our effective rate is 12 and three quarters percent, not 33 and a third. Our entire tax bill is about a third of the $40,000 figure Mr. Andrew just casually threw out in his example. That's 20 4,708 fewer dollars paid in taxes than suggested. So why would I harp on this point? Well, it really comes down to this. And yes, I do realize that my cynicism elements are glowing red hot right now. A lot of insurance agents who sell the idea of life insurance as a retirement income asset harp on the tax-free nature of life insurance. Now, I'm certainly not going to tell you that tax-free income is not a good thing. I'm a big advocate of it. I've written several articles on the subject. I've recorded videos advocating for the use of life insurance because of its tax-free income capabilities. But I also believe very fundamentally and very wholeheartedly that if somebody is going to make changes to their retirement assets, the impact, the cost of doing that must create a net net benefit positive to the individual. If you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of money saved and you're trying to decide, should I put money in a deductible account and pay taxes on it later? Or should I focus more of my efforts on non-taxable assets? I would absolutely advocate for non-taxable assets. But if you're 55 and you have a million dollars in a 401k and you want to retire in five to 10 years, the expense of moving money from the taxable 401k to a non-taxable vehicle, especially like life insurance, it's quite high. And there's a good chance that the savings and taxes will never overcome the expense of making that move that late in life. But if the tax liability assumed from the distributions of the retirement assets that are taxable is extremely high. That creates a lot more motivation to make the move. So what I'm saying is life insurance agents have intentionally overinflated tax liabilities for years as a way to motivate people to dump their regular qualified and someday taxable assets and move them into life insurance where it wouldn't be taxable. And they justify this move with a inflated expectation about what tax rates are going to be or what tax liabilities will be either now or in the future. I am aware that some people are going to push back on this and tell me something like, well, just because that's not the scenario today doesn't mean it couldn't be the scenario next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. And if you believe that, you believe that. I'm not really interested in trying to convince you that you're wrong regarding that. In fact, to some degree, I think that taxes will at least be somewhat higher in the future versus where they set today. But I can also tell you that when I started working in this industry nearly 20 years ago, that was the discussion perpetuated by everybody then. And in my entire career lifetime, I'm not really seeing tax rates from an effective standpoint being any higher now than they were when I entered the industry. But even if tax rates do go up and effective tax liabilities do go up with them, we need to see taxes increase on a married couple taking $120,000 out of their 401k go up by 162%. That's one and a half times their current tax liability in order to get to a scenario like Doug's $40,000 tax liability on $120,000 of income. It's not impossible. Nothing is when it comes to federal government decisions. But the chances of it happening are extremely unlikely. And to those of you who want to come and tell me about all the woes of Social Security and its insolvency and the need to raise taxes to save it from bankruptcy, I'm aware of, of the financial circumstances of that system. But keep in mind, it's a system funded with payroll taxes. So if you're retired, the revenue system used to generate income to support Social Security doesn't apply to you. Taxes are high. I do agree. But they're not as high as some people would lead you to believe. 
And you definitely don't need to upend your financial circumstances to hide from a tax boogeyman that really may not be lurking around the corner. It takes a little bit more thought and a little bit more reality to come to the right decision. So be careful.